I've been working on a project that I believe is going to help you not only discover more of who you are, but also who you're meant to be. You alone are enough. In Oprah Winfrey's latest book, The Path Made Clear, she explores the power of setting intentions and accepting your calling. I started to ask what I, I have now deemed one of the most important questions anybody can ask of themselves is what do I really want? Everyone has a purpose and according to Oprah Winfrey, your real job in life is to figure out as soon as possible what that is, who you are meant to be and begin to honor your calling in the best way possible. Oprah shares what she sees as a guide for activating your deepest vision of yourself, offering the framework for creating not just a life of success, but one of significance. Oprah opens each chapter by sharing her own key lessons and the personal stories that helped set the course for her best life. You're feeling stuck or at a crossroads. There's no need to waste another moment wondering if there is more to life. Of course there is. She then brings together wisdom and insights from luminaries in a wide array of fields, inspiring readers to consider what they're meant to do in the world and how to pursue it with passion and focus. Renowned figures such as Eckhart Tolle, Breen Brown, Lean Manuel Miranda, Elizabeth Gilbert, Jay-Z and Ellen DeGeneres share the greatest lessons from their own journeys toward a life filled with purpose. My new book, it's called The Path Made Clear, Discovering Your Life's Direction and Purpose. Good morning to you. Welcome to Books and Blogs. My name is Catherine Mwangi. We are here at Four Points by Sheraton at the airport. We thank the management for granting us the permission to film from this beautiful hotel. Today we discuss Oprah Winfrey's latest book, an incredible book, The Path Made Clear. And we have a very young panel. I think it's the first time on Books and Blogs that we have a complete super young panel. Or maybe they just look young and are not young. How do we know? So we have Sian Saitonik. Have I pronounced it well? Perfect. Sian is, <laughs> she is a marketer. She's passionate about brands. She runs all over the world. Where have you run? Dubai. Girl. <laughs> okay. Rwanda, Egypt, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. You just love running. Yes, I do. Nice. Yeah. That's, That's my nice. purpose. It's your purpose. <laughs> hey, we'll come there. Then we have Martin Tange, mm -hmm. who loves eating mangoes. Yes, <laughs> it's the first time I've seen that in someone's bio. Okay, and he's also a um, reluctant poet. What's a reluctant poet? I do poetry, but reluctantly. Like I, I don't <laughs> enjoy it when it's happening, but when it comes out, like um, I like the the result. Yeah. So can you drop something now? I cannot. It's relax. No, that relax. <laughs> You're gonna be reluctant. <laughs> and he's also a um, social commentary podcaster. So what do you comment yeah. on? Um, last time we were speaking about the trend of um, a lot of women being killed in Nairobi. So such kinds of things that happen. Ah, yeah. yeah. We did that show. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's what we did last time. Yeah. And we have Miss Naftali Jayang. I love. I love. I love your surname. She's not a stranger on this show. We discussed Michelle Obama's book with her a couple of weeks ago, which she totally, totally loved. It's the best book of her life. Let's see what she says about the Oprah show. She works a lot with the youth. Tell us about your work with the young people. You do a lot. And you're a lawyer, you don't like me saying it. <laughs> no, I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> well, you've studied law. Paralegal studies. <laughs> so yes, so you work, you work with young people, I do. teenage, teenage uh, moms I think? Uh, well, teenage girls, women and youth in general, so even women who are above the youth age, I love to work with them. Mostly I enjoy community development yeah. and my work focuses around the social, economical, moral impact and the wholesome education of all these parts together. You are so modest, yes, you've done so much. That's how she speaks, by the way. She's not pretending. Yeah, she All the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All the time, Marty. All the time. So, uh, before the show, Marty, you said, and it's Marty, not Martin. Yeah, it's Marty. Marty. Yeah. Okay. It's Kenyan. Is it what, from which part of Africa? French speaking Africa or? <laughs> um, Kenyan. Yeah. Kenyan? Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. 
So you've read the book? I have. Okay. Yeah. Your general overview of this, you know, Oprah is African American. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> that's that's what you guys say. <laughs> but, uh -huh. um, and I know why you're picking on me. Um, <laughs> because, guys, um, before we started the show, um, I said that I paused when she asked if I liked it, which is why she's picking on me now. <laughs> um, but uh, I learned from it, which is what I told you before. Like, I, I don't have to like it as long as I take the lessons that she was actually trying to impart. Mm -hmm. right? So I actually, I learned a lot from the book. So and what I, do you like in books? I mean, if you didn't have to like this one. Yeah. I like the storyline. I like some effort put into writing the book. Okay. <laughs> because, no, like if you're being honest, she gathered a lot of perspectives from other people and then put it all in a book. Um, when on my scale of effort, that's, um, <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's just above five out of ten. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, and I like generally African books because for a long time we've been reading stories by others and now it's time we write and read our own stories and tell them about mm. Okay, yeah. so I'll, I'll have you very mute throughout the show because you've given Oprah Winfrey a five. <laughs> In effort. <laughs> In effort. In effort only. Yeah. yeah. Sian, what was most attractive? Do you first of all like the book? Yes, I did. Okay. Yes. A lot. Yeah, a lot. Really, a lot. Right? Yeah, like I said that already. Yeah. I know, so right? So it's a nine out of ten for oh, me. Oh, okay, nine. Yeah, yeah it's okay. a nine. We went to a twelve. <laughs> yeah, we need to leave one somewhere hanging. Somewhere, okay. Yeah. So. Generally, I love the, uh, the fact that she brought in a couple of guys with different life experiences so that at least you have an aspect of, in terms of what is purpose to different people, yes. real life example yeah. that you can relate with to and some which you don't, but at least you can nod your head like, yeah, that makes sense, you know? Yeah, that's it. That's what he likes yeah, about yeah. it, that she brought different people. Yeah. What he's giving a five. Well, <laughs> let him be. <laughs> okay. Jayong? I love the book. <laughs> so finally, we I are love the book. on the same page. However, though. <laughs> However, okay. Uh, I agree with Marty. Yeah. Um, I expected more of her than so many voices, but at the end of the day, I still appreciated the very many voices because then I wasn't seeing it from one person's perspective. It makes you just see the entire purpose and discovery journey is something that everybody else has to do whether you want it or not it's something that you will come to do at one point in your life you'll feel confused you need to find what you are here for and what you want to do and also appreciated the fact that she said that um, the path to discovery yourself is a spiritual journey you have to go in, inwards into yourself some of us take travels take journeys go for excursions just to find who we are and what we want to do but then you go there and then you come back and then you realize all you wanted was right here with you, inside of you. So I love the fact that that was brought out and the fact that tragedy and you know, high points in life are you know, part of life and that one of the per persons she brought into the book she says that we go through recovery and discovery at the same time. So even if tragedy happens, what are you learning through it? So those are the things I really appreciated and it's like a church moment, the entire book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> From A to Z. Yeah. Yes. It comes across as that, but then you realize, and I think I agree with all of your points, that she brought in so many different people. So spiritualists, new age teachers, um, uh, LGBT, you know, yeah. voices. Um, so each had something they'd been through and they shared that. And every chapter started with her own story, Marty yeah, yeah, first, yeah. <laughs> before bringing in, you know, the rest of the teachers, let me call them teachers. Yeah. So I like that she went, she went everywhere to pick these gems of wisdom and put them in a book. For me, that's important because it introduced me to people I'd never heard of before, people I didn't know of, so I found myself like going to Wikipedia, who's this person? What are the books? That, then you realize almost everyone has written a book. So my next journey is I want a book from this person. I want a book from this person because of the things they said. Yeah. That is why I love this book. I don't know. The only thing I felt like she was missing was disaster stories. Like, disaster stories? That yeah, was actually example, the last story. But no, anyway. in terms of not a disaster turned into something good, uh -huh. um, just a disaster. Like, for example, she picked stories of people who um, are good in our eyes and successful, but she, what I felt like she missed was, like, is there something like a bad purpose? For example, like, people who 
deal? Can your purpose be dealing? You know, like people who are good who at sent dealing. You? Like who invited you? <laughs> <laughs> who brought like, you here? No, like there's a purpose. For me, the question was like, uh, she was like things that she was raising for me was, um, can a purpose be directed towards a bad end? You know, such kinds of things. Like for example, so that someone else can learn from having to interact with you. So what's a bad bad end? Give us an example. Something that ends tragically. Like um, I don't know, like you have presidents who run their countries into the ground. Yeah. Or you have so many people in prison. Right? Yeah. You have many criminals in the, yeah. in the prison system. Right? If someone is good at stealing, you know, is is that then their purpose? Because it's someone really else, stealing. like they're supposed to maybe. What for example, African book are you currently reading? <laughs> <laughs> Just ask. All the headlines on our Nigerian news. <laughs> it's all the headlines, eh? Like you know how like bad things happen to good people, so yeah. they can learn from them. Yeah. Is that bad thing that was done by that bad person? Did good is, come out of it, or did the bad end up becoming purposeful? Um, what are you asking? I'm asking, for example, if. I have to learn from a bad experience. Yeah. The person who takes me through that bad experience was that their purpose? You understand what I'm saying? Uh. Yeah. Like, and I didn't feel like she covered enough of the disaster story um, in terms of what happens if someone just they keep on doing bad things. Right? How then do they discover their purpose themselves? I think there was a story on that. Mm -hmm. There was one. There was a gentleman who talked about his parents and his father, who they just seemed to be there. They are always busy, always doing something, and their children literally raise themselves up. They missed the aspect of their parents being not only present, but active and available. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, he, he says that he spent so much time making YouTube videos, Twitter, short videos, whatever. His life was literally on social media, and that is a space that raised them up. So he had to find a way to, you know, him and his sister grow up and be the persons that they are today. Because then, he, like I said, when they would go to school, the parents would come for, you know, the parents, they, you know, come for checking of their homework mm -hmm. and see how they're progressing in their academics. But then when it comes to literally sitting down with the children and getting to know the children, they really were not there. Because mm -hmm. they say, you know, someone comes at six, mm -hmm. that's when you have your dinner. The other comes at 12, this is when they have your dinner. Yeah. Literally, there's no family time. Yeah. But then you have to grow through it. And I don't think that... For most of us that we go out with this purpose to harm people because we want something good out of it. Most right. of us would really want something good out of a person, even if it has to go through a difficult lesson sometimes, but most of the times we'll be doing it out of love. Mm. Right. Is that story disastrous enough for you? <laughs> That's what what are you looking for? We want death, like death, and someone is going to Because even death was there. There was, thing. There was death. Except yeah. it wasn't inspired by that person. It was an accident, so he lost his yeah, wife. Joe. Yeah. yeah, Joe Biden, yeah. the one who lost oh, yeah, the yeah, wife yeah, yeah. and the kids. Yeah. But what I, what I wanted to ask him, if he means strategy in terms of he's still, that person is still there struggling yeah. with it. Yeah. He didn't finally make there's no find his path. You know, mm. you find in your path. Yeah. He didn't find his path. Mm. He's still struggling or she's still struggling. That's what you're hoping to see. No, I think my wider question is more of like the understanding of purpose. Like, does it have to be a good thing or end up in a good way? You know? Because the stories presented here are yeah. of people who struggle yeah. to find their path. Yeah. So they battled with not just outside forces, but internal as well. Yeah. Self-doubt, low yeah. self-esteem, missing parents. So all of those small things, it took lots of people, lots of time to find out what, where am I supposed to be? And she tries to normalize it because all the people she's featured, all the contributors, we can each see ourselves in them. Yeah. So whether you're high society or not, there's a story there you really be like, oh my God, this is so me, or this is so our family, or this is so my sister. Right. But then the stories of how they overcame. Right. So for you, you're saying, is there, there was no story of someone who didn't overcome whatever. I, I, More or less. Yeah, kind of. Plus also, like, she didn't also like answer the question, is there something like a bad purpose or a purpose towards a bad end? You know, like, at least to even just say no. She didn't answer like it because you don't exist, honey. Okay. 
Okay, sorry. Nothing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, but then, at the end of life, no one really sits down and says that, you know, I am proud that I was a bad person. Everybody ends life. I think there's, I think there's a book that talks about the five um, regrets people have yeah. um, when, when they die that they were absent from their families, relationships, and they never invested much more time in their children and whatever else, you know, it wasn't about their careers and it really wasn't whatever else. So I do not think people actually are at the end of their lives proud of not being there or doing something bad. So what bad thing are you going through? Maybe this is only now. <laughs> are you seeking validation for a bad thing, you know? <laughs> no, not yet. Book? It's not that bad yet. It's not that bad yet, <laughs> no, but it no, no, no. is bad. <laughs> The thing that surprised me though is amongst the list of contributors, unless I missed out, I didn't see Tyler Perry. And yet, did you see Tyler Perry? No. 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 Yet, she's, she's the godmother to the son. It's Tyler, if it were not for Tyler's intervention, Owen would never have, the, the network would never have stabilized because Tyler took his content there and because his content is popular, people are able to subscribe to her channel. But I didn't see any, anything from Tyler Perry. Who didn't want to? No. No, she says somewhere but in the book that nowadays she speaks to whoever she wants to speak to. So she said that. Yes. But she is the godmother to Tyler Perry. Like well. they, have, they have such a relationship. So I respected that she didn't go Hollywood a list on ah, uh, you know, like I don't know Lady Gaga, Beyonce, you know that. The, there was the, one musician in there. Jay Z. Yeah. Yeah, Jay-Z is okay. He's like the godfather of black something music. <laughs> Y'all tell me who he's not. No. I mean, out of all the no, black musicians, not. unless he's Michael not Jackson, who's there? Actually, no, wait. The black excellence. Yeah, the guy is... It's <laughs> Jay-Z. <laughs> no, there's no one above him right now to speak. In terms the of music. money. You're speaking male. in terms of money. No, or in terms music of male. Black American music male. Like a music genius? I think no, Kanye like a, is. A, a guru or Kanye. an established billionaire Kanye. in music. Kanye is. No, Kanye is lower. Jay Z mentored Kanye. Even Kanye says it. So I, I didn't mind Jay Z, <laughs> but know what you're but he's, about. <laughs> you wouldn't know. <laughs> but know. He's, I'm sorry, his his quote or whatever wasn't deep for me. I'm like, no, what is this one saying? In fact, why is this one in the book? Beyonce but then I had didn't reveal. Yeah. Beyonce, uh, did Beyonce, Beyonce didn't reveal. So I said maybe she did it for the culture. Mm, like maybe. Jay Z had to come here for the culture. Like my people have to know of Jay Z's in the book, even if it's just three lines. Yeah. But I respected that she did not give me names I know. Um, I was okay. There's a podcast by Oprah um, called Masterclass. The whole tell, I don't know if you've engaged with the Tyler Perry story in there. Um, I know. So, I, I know Tyler Perry's story without yeah. listening to any podcast. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry for, for my function. It's okay. For the viewers um, now. Okay. Um, so I listened to Tyler Perry's story from <clears throat> that podcast by Oprah. It's called Masterclass. Yeah. I think um, he holds it very dearly, and he. The way I listened to it, maybe she did not want it to be there. And maybe she didn't she want Tyler Perry. In there, because she already had him on another, like for about 35 minutes, he speaks about his whole story growing up yeah. and those kinds of things.